hit him. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick. A couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today looking at the question, how do we secure REST APIs to the same level that we secure SOAP APIs? And of course the question has a simple answer. It depends. It depends on many things. One of which is, how do you even define security? Um, today, let's start with that. What is security? You know, the common definition is confidentiality, availability, integrity. Another definition of security from a product based is that the product performs as expected and as intended. Uh, still kind of vague. But the tip for you is whenever you're looking at products such as APIs, to peel back a little bit and figure out what could impact confidentiality, what could impact availability, what could impact integrity, and of course, what could make the thing not behave like it was expected to do. This is very well exemplified by the difference between SOAP, or what, uh, Simple Object Access Protocol, and REST, or Representative uh, State Transfer. SOAP is a standard. It's adopted by WC3. It's been standardized, it's been formalized, there's an RFC, etc., etc. REST is a style. REST is a way of programming. REST is the collective wisdom of all of us who've been writing APIs for a long time. SOAP delivers things in XML. REST, yeah, I'll do XML, but it'll also do JSON, which is much more common. Uh, so you have differences in output. SOAP is very robust and verbose in how it's defined. REST is, hey, whatever you want it. It'll work. <laughs> SOAP has a thing called a WSDO, which is fantastic. It's a way of self-documenting what the API should do. Uh, it uh, allows you to do two things from a security perspective. One, prevent uh, values from being injected into the code. So you expect a number, but someone sends you text, for example. It also allows you to just, uh, plug on fuzzers and security tools to say, hey, look at this WSDL, test it, and make sure it actually behaves the way that its document said to do. WSDLs are generated automatically. REST does not have a WSDL. Used to have a waddle, I kid you not, it was called a waddle, but it didn't take off. Um, there are plugins you can use. You can use things like um, like uh, uh, Swagger or Rambler. Swagger, Rambler, I like that, Swagger, Rambler, yeah. Um, and that will create something similar, but in general, there's no real clear way to say thou shalt only accept a number when it's a number, thou shalt only accept a string when it's a string, and by the way, here's everything that our function should do so that you can do some security testing on it. Those are all manual things that have to be handled by the code or by the developers. Um, what else? SOAP, the protocol, has uh, a thing called WS Security. WS Security would do uh, message level code signing so that you cannot uh, tamper with the message. It will also do message level encryption, so you cannot see that message. Um, REST sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. Uh, it can if you are using some of the main REST protocol libraries like Apigee or Amazon's. Amazon has these two functions built into them, uh, code level signing encryption. But in general, that's up to the developer to either do or not do. So. If you're creating standards, you either tell your developers, thou shalt use Apigee or implement something similar to code level signing, or you don't, and they do whatever they want, and you don't have anything like Rambler to tell you what's supposed to be there either, so then it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, what else? Both are HTTP protocols, which means you should be using TLS. Uh, as part of using TLS, you should be using um, certificate pinning. You should be using um, strict, right, uh, so that the message is encrypted all the way through end to end, and so that the um, message hopefully cannot be intercepted by your proxy and decrypted and viewed and reassembled vis-a-vis a man in the middle attack. So TLS is pretty important, and you know when you think about WS security, I was kind of doing a lot of the same stuff TLS was doing anyways. So. Um, REST plus really good implement TLS, plus using an API framework for message signing, gets you something vaguely equivalent to SOAP plus WS security. That will get you end-to-end -end encryption and protection and confidentiality and integrity. Which you then need to ask yourselves, what are the bad guys are gonna do next? 
Whenever you've done end to end, they attack you at the ends. <laughs> so you gotta look at uh, code quality. And this is fundamentally, in my opinion, um, the way to secure APIs, regardless of it's SOAP or REST, is good, good uh, secure development lifecycle, good, good static code analysis, good dynamic analysis, and regular pen testing. Because most oftentimes when I'm seeing a problem with REST or SOAP APIs, it's not because of the message confidentiality, it's because there's a really big bad bug in the API or in the client that allowed the criminals to get in. So that is just a rundown on some of the considerations to think about when looking at um, SOAP and a REST and figuring out how you can secure REST like you can secure SOAP. Questions, comments, hit me up in the comments or social media and I'll talk to you later.